播。You had a credit score like that. Could you get anything you wanted? Well, the scoring model does not go up that high. Okay. But uh, if you had an eight, well, really anything above seven sixty, you can have whatever you want, and you get the best rate for whatever you want. You can imagine why people are disturbed by this uh, credit number True. because when you and I were younger, there was no such thing. I don't. True. Think, right? Yeah. Now we're judged immediately by this number and this mysterious number that comes from. We don't know where. Right. Right. And there are different credit reporting agencies. Right. And this number controls your life. It really does. People don't realize how much this number affects their insurance rates on home and auto, uh, on, on their credit card, on their mortgage, on their auto loan. Really, you know, and it's going even further where people are looking at your credit report for uh, a job. So wow. it's really important. Like it. Well, you know... If, when you understand the scoring model, I think you understand why it's important. And what I, I feel like, if you take control of your credit, it can work for you. That's the tricky part, though. Yeah. Because people sometimes are in for a whopper of a surprise when they look at their credit number. Correct. Which, by the way, is it free to do that? Yeah. If you go to annualcreditreport.com, you get one free copy of your credit report once a year. Okay. So, obviously, that's sponsored somehow by somebody. It's federally mandated. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. So, they look at that number and say, dear God, how did I get that number? Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Well, and then they usually start to get a little more interested in how to improve it. So, and they can look. It's listed. Why did you get a 530 or well, whatever? Yeah, there are four reason codes. If you look at the credit score, if you get a credit score and you don't necessarily get one from annualcreditreport.com, usually if you want a score, you have to pay for it. But there are four reason codes why your score wasn't higher. And that's really the first place I tell people to go uh, on how to improve their own score. Is look at those four reason codes, and it'll tell you how to improve. What sort of reasons would there be? Uh, revolving balance is too high is a common one. Meaning you're never paying down the principal? Right. You're running a high balance, and it becomes more and more important with the changes going on at, at the federal level with Fannie and Freddie. Fascinating now that when yeah. you get a credit statement, it says, I don't know, this must be federally mandated too, or they say if you make the minimum payment on this, you will have it paid off in yeah. 37 years, yeah. and you're, you're going to pay 17 times the amount that you borrowed. Right, so you go to McDonald's and you wind up financing that for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense, and that's why I feel like if you educate people on the importance of your credit score, people will pay more attention to it. Hmm. But it's not hard to get a good score. You just have to have the right behavior. So revolving credit on your Best Buy card or whatever it is, try right. to get those things paid off. And uh, late payments, I suppose. How late do you have to be for it to show up? And right. So um, It seems like a threat sometimes. Right. Usually you've got to be more than 30 days past due for them to report you as 30 days past due. That's not obviously. much. No. And I, I find that if you, know, if you pay your balances before the reporting date, your score will go up naturally because you're reporting a lower balance. So when I say oh. the reporting date, I mean the date that they share that information with the repository. And the repositories are the three major collectors of the data in the country, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. So all the creditors send the information from their database to the repositories on one day. And that day usually is right around in between the 5th and the, and the 8th. But it's different for every company, so I would tell you to check with your credit provider. Mm -hmm. But you need to pay your balances down before that date. That way you're reporting a lower balance when that reporting date goes to the repository. So uh, it, that also depends when they give you your statement, too. Well, it's not necessarily the statement date. Right. So it could be. Um, so the way you find out what the reporting date is, you can call them and ask them, and they will tell you when the reporting date is. Uh, you can look on your statement, and every month, you know, as the month goes by, you get more and more things on your current balances. And when you go in the next day and check your statement online and they're all gone, the day that day yesterday was the reporting date. When you make uh, an offer and compromise with a credit card company, mm -hmm. I don't know if they still do that or not. I well, it's called settle for less than full balance now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does that damage your credit score? Depends on how they report it. Because you made a deal. Yeah. Seems only fair that it wouldn't. Well, if you're closing the account and you're settled for less than full balance, 
you know, the score doesn't look at the words. It only looks at if it's zero. So oh. if it's zero and closed. However it got there. Yeah, you're better off than having it with a balance and still open. So if you have an, an error or if you made a mistake or a collection, you're better off paying that off and then letting that date kind of sunset into the past mm -hmm. as time goes by. This is where you would call and say, look, I owe you five. Yeah. I'll give you 2500 right now. We call it quits. Well, I tell people to start at 5% or actually 10% of the balance. 10%? Yeah. So if you owe, you know, 1000 bucks, offer 100 because they bought that debt for pennies on the dollar. If you're talking about a collection company. They bought that debt for pennies on the dollar. You start at 10, and usually you work your way up to about 50%, which is what you said. But isn't it better to pay the company directly than the collection company? Whoever holds the debt is who you want to pay. If they've already sold it to the collection company, you probably have to deal with them. But you want to make sure that that previous creditor reports that as zero. Like, you don't want the balances on both. Mm -hmm. So if they're reporting it as zero and it's now with a collection company, that's where you start negotiating hard, and it's all up to you on how much you pay. But if you defaulted on it and they sent it to the collection company yeah, and it's zero, it's zero because they sold it to collection. Right. So that should reflect poorly anyway, right? It will, but it'll have an end date, right? So the date, it will stop reporting and it'll be zero and then it'll be with the collection company and that's who you deal with. How do we deal with you? We're barely scratching the surface, but sure. it's mysterious, it's fascinating, and you seem to have all the answers and we appreciate that. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, We'll hear you in Kalamazoo and statewide this morning with Michael Patrick Shields. And